What's up, people? Josh Todd from Buck Cherry here, and you're watching Life Minute TV. Check it out. Josh Todd and his band Buck Cherry have been rocking the music scene for years, wowing fans around the globe with a commitment to a unique rock and roll sound, an unmistakable voice, and a charismatic stage presence all their own. We caught up with the 51-year-old rocker, father, and grandfather, yes, grandfather, from his home in LA this week, while on a short break from their current tour, to hear all about the band's latest release, their ninth studio album, Hellbound, which Todd promises to be the band's best yet. This is a Life Minute with Josh Todd. Hellbound drops June 25th, and it's amazing. We're really excited for it to hit the streets. You know, it's our ninth record. It marks 22 years in the game, and we're going to be out doing what we do best, and that's being on stage, bringing this to the people, you know. So go check out our videos on YouTube. So Hot and Hellbound is already out, and we're going to be dropping another one here pretty soon. And, um, you know, our goal is to make a video for every song on the record, so uh, look out for that as well. Historically, whenever this band's been kind of backed up against the wall like we were with COVID and dealing with a lot of adversity, we always seem to make our best records. This is definitely one of the best records and uh, I'm very proud of it. We spent a lot of time on the songwriting. You know, we wrote about 28 songs for a 10 song record and it really paid off. I think Buck Cherry is definitely an acquired taste. It's a very, a very unique flavor of rock and roll. You know, where when you hear a Buck Cherry song, you know it's Buck Cherry and I'm very proud of that. You know. You're always going to get your money's worth when you go to the live show, and that's that's what I can say about Buck Cherry. And personally, I can only speak from my for myself. I'm I'm very driven and very passionate about music in general, and and songwriting, and my craft, and singing. And I'm a real student of the game. I got this new like kind of incantation that I tell myself before I go on stage. I just I get back there, and I'm you know I I'm getting grateful. I get in the gratitude, but then I just I just say to myself. If this was the last one, how is it going to play out? How are you going to do this one? You know, and um, that seems to be really uh, working for me right now. I, I'm really enjoying that one. What inspires me to create? Passion, first and foremost. You know, I'm I'm very passionate about songs and songwriting, and you know, from the moment I heard. Uh, songs being played in my home, you know, by my mother, and she used to put on records and clean the house, you know, and, and I just remember those records, you know, Willie Nelson, and Kenny Rogers, and the Eagles, and Rod Stewart, and those were the, as soon as I started listening to songs, I was just like, this is awesome. I just love the melodies, I love the words, and like I said, it was just something that I gravitated towards from a very early age, and I didn't know that this was going to be my path, I just knew, knew that I loved it, and then Cut to, I got into my first band in high school and wrote my first original composition and I was like, this is it, that was it. That was like the moment. And then I wasn't really a singer at that point. I just started developing my voice at that point because I had a knack for the, the writing aspect. I was really into dirty comedy as a kid, you know? I mean, I love stand-up comedians. Me and my cousin used to go down in the basement of his house and we would watch George Carlin videos and Richard Pryor and Sam Kinison. And I looked past just the dirty comedy aspect. What it was for me was, I used to be fascinated with George Carlin and how he wrote all his bits and he put them all together. And he was very, very um, articulate and uh, just a master at, you know, the game of stand-up comedy, and I was really into that aspect of it, you know. But putting that all together, I kind of, I think kind of shapes me as an, as an artist and makes it, um, makes me, uh, I guess, you know, a little bit unique in my own way, you know. If you would have told my 20-year-old self that I was gonna have three kids at some point, I, I, I gotta honestly tell you, I never thought I would live past 30. Honestly, I started partying at 13. I stopped drinking and using drugs at 23. So I'm just blessed. I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to, to be a father, you know, and a husband. And I have not done it gracefully, but there's a lot of things that I have done well. And I just love my children so much and cherish the time that I get to spend with them because I do spend a lot of time away. 
and we all have a really great relationship. That's that's what it's been for me. It's been amazing. Being an open book and being honest in all your affairs, you know, that's that's very important. That's that's a big one, and um, you know, making sure that you are empathetic and spend as much time as you can with each other and really become a good listener as a man. That's, you know, I can only speak as a man because I'm not a woman, but I know as a man, being a good li listener and, and being empathetic is, is something that I'm really, I really work on and gratitude for sure. I have a lot of things uh, I do. I picked up tennis again. I played it when I was a kid, not, not like every, like uh, competitively, but I played it for a little while and then I just started watching the tennis channel out on the road and I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna get into tennis. And whenever I commit to something, I, I, I get very obsessive with it because that's my uh, my personality. And and then I'm, I go fishing a lot. So on the road, I'll like either go fishing or play some tennis on my days off and, and at home as well. I'll take my son, we'll go fishing a lot. Something no one knows about me. I've always been obsessed with uh, shoe wear, okay? So, since I was a little boy, my mother would get me like a pair of Vans, right? And I would, every day I would look at the bottom of my shoes and see how fast I was wearing the soles out because I knew that once they become, came flat, like there was no traction, that I could talk my mother into getting a new pair of shoes. So, um, I have, to this day, I've been always obsessed with shoe wear, and now I like I I look at my soles every day, and then I get my own pair of shoes when I'm ready. But that's something I do that's kind of silly. To hear more of this interview, visit our podcast Life Minute TV on iTunes and all streaming podcast platforms. Mm -hmm.